All right, in this video, I'm gonna make a graphical user interface for my pistol to see how much ammo I have. So when I pull it out of my backpack, boom, there it is, ammo. Six, six shots out of a capacity of six. That's why I have two numbers there. Let's shoot at this zombie. Let's empty the clip. Uh-oh, I'm missing. And then we get to zero. You get the click sound. We'll do the reload in the next video, but we needed the GUI first, the graphical user interface. Let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, so I got my fresh world right here. I wanna get that gun. I'm gonna to go to my web browser. I'll put this link in the description so you can click on it. Just keep in mind, there's an animation in here and we have to do something special. But once you get to this page, there'll be a button right here. It'll be green, it'll say get, you press it. Then when you go to Roblox Studio, go to Toolbox, under your inventory, you will see it. There we go. Yep, I know where the scripts are and I know what's in them. And there's videos for that too, if you wanna see. So I'm gonna get my pistol kickback damage GUI. I'm gonna put it in starter pack. Now in order for the kickback to work, since I published this under my account, you're gonna to need to publish it under your account so it'll work in your games. Go to Anim Saves, I put that in the weapon, and then under Kickback, right click, Save to Roblox, and then go ahead and Submit. This is going to publish it under your account so you can use it for your games, or if this is Team Create, the Creator account for anybody on the team. Hit this ID, hit these little squares here, ID copied, close, kickback, control V. There you go. Now the kickback should work. It wouldn't have worked otherwise. It would, the gun would still work. You just wouldn't get the little kickback am, uh, animation. Let's go to up the starter GUI and start working on our GUI. So starter GUI, hit the plus sign, screen GUI. Now we're going to copy this into our pistol. We want the model to be complete but I want to design it in my starter GUI because I can see it then. I'm going to call this gun screen GUI, right? And then on the gun screen GUI, I'm going to add a text label. Here it is. And then on the text label, let's go down to anchor point. I'm going to make that one and one because I want to anchor it down here. And then for background transparency, I'll make that one. We don't need to see the background. For the name, we could change that here. Ammo, LBL. Notice it changed it here. You could change it in either spot, here or down here. All right, and now position. I will make this 0.95 scale on the X, zero pixel offset, 0.95 scale on the Y, zero pixel offset. That gets it down here in the corner. All right, I'll keep the size 200 pixels by 50 pixels. Let's go to font. We can make a bangers or cartoon or whatever you want. And then text. I'm not gonna change it because we're gonna change that with code. Uh, text color I'll change. I'm gonna make that like yellow. Cool. I need to make this bigger. So text scale. And then I'm gonna give a little outline around the letters. That's text stroke transparency. I'm gonna make that zero. All right? I'll make this bigger so you see it. Well this part bigger, text stroke transparency. There you go. All right, now we're done. All we gotta do, we're done the, the GUI part. Let's grab this gun screen GUI, drag it down to our uh, pistol, pistol kickback damage that we drug in. I'm gonna go to enabled and disable the gun screen GUI. Disable it because we're not using it in here, we're just storing it in here. So we could have a complete model. Cool, let's go to our shoot. There we go. We gotta add some variables, right? We definitely gotta get a hold of our gun screen GUI or we won't be able to show it. So we'll say gun screen GUI. Let's call this the template. We will clone it from this. I have the template, script.parent, and then I'll do a wait for child. So colon wait for child. And then this is a, whoops. This is a gun GUI. Oh my gosh, there we go. Gun screen GUI. I gotta make this a little smaller now. There we go. This name must match 
the name that's in the it's in the pistol. Cool. And now we're going to make a variable for the cloned gun screen GUI, right? I'll just name it the same, but with no template. And then we'll initialize that to nil, right? We have no value when we start. I need the ammo label and we'll initialize that to nil for now. And then I need the number of bullets, which is the ammo. Six, we'll do six because it's easier for demo. You do 12 if you want. Local max ammo, we'll make that six. Cool, we're gonna need a little function to display our GUI. So we'll say local function make ammo GUI. Now the player GUI gets cloned from the starter GUI to your player when you start the game. So we need to get a hold of the player GUI because we need to be able to add it and take it off and stuff. So we'll say local player GUI, player, wait for child. We know it's there so we can wait. Player GUI, cool. And now let's get this screen GUI, see if it's already on the player GUI. Maybe we called this before. We're just doing a check, but I'm gonna do find first child. Whoops, make sure that's capital. Find first child, because it might not be there and we don't want it to wait. So we're gonna say, I right, keep doing that. Gun screen GUI, there. All right, like I said, it might not be there. So we'll do an if statement. If gun screen GUI, then Let's do if not gun screen GUI, then, so we didn't find it, we'll say screen GUI, we're gonna get our gun screen GUI template, clone it, and then get our gun screen GUI dot parent, and then make it a child of the player GUI. So that essentially puts it on the player GUI. Then you can see it but we're gonna to check to make sure it's not already there. Cause we only wanna do this once and then once it's there, we don't wanna do it again, right? But remember, we gotta make it enabled. So gun screen GUI enabled equals true. Now we can get our label, our ammo label. We need to get that from the gun screen GUI. Find first child, ammo label. And I'm not gonna do an if for this one. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be there. So I'll say, ammo label text and then we put our little message that we want to show in our in our text label and i'm going to say ammo give it give it some information this is a string concatenator dot dot we're going to put the number of bullets we have another string concatenator we'll do this little slash for a fact another string concatenator and then the max ammo and that will give us like six slash six when we start out and it'll have ammo so you know what it is that's pretty cool all right we need to call this where do we call it well let's call it when we put it on so i'm going to copy that i did a control c i'm going to go down to equipped and then maybe at the bottom of this control v to paste it and then when i take off the gun or put it back in my backpack i'm just going to get the gun screen gui Ooh, let's check to see if it's there though. Just in case like something weird happens, like we're dying or something. So I'll say if, mm, yeah, if gun screen GUI, yeah, let's do it like that. Then gun screen GUI dot enabled equals false, right? So we made it true when we put it on, we make it false when we unequip it. That way it'll go away. Cool. What else? So when we do our shooting, right, we have this debounce, a little bit of a cool down, but we also have to check to make sure there's ammo now. So I'm gonna say can shoot and ammo is greater than zero. But I also have to do clicks when we run out of ammo or this is where we're gonna do our reload. I'll do an else if ammo you could do equals equals zero, then. We'll just print click, click for now. But because 
there's not strong typing between integers and decimals. If you do like loops and stuff with your ammo, which we're not going to, but a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just do a, a less than or equal to zero. And that way, if we get like a negative 0.999999 or something like that, we still will still enter this. Cool. I think we're good. Oh, you know what? We got to get, uh, we got to subtract our ammo. Let's do that like right after this statement. So when we shoot and it's effective, we're going to get our ammo. We're going to do a negative equal one. Whoops, one. And what this is going to do is it's going to say decrement or decrease by this amount on this number. So it's ammo equals ammo minus one. That's what it's shorthand for. Then I'm going to get this right here, update our text. All right, looking good. No clicks yet, but we can try it out. There we go. There's our GUI. Oh, it's going down. And then if we look at our printout right here, we can see the clicks. So let's go ahead and get a sound for our clicks. Stop this and we'll go to home toolbox. Let's go to marketplace audio gun click. Uh, that's a revolver, but it still sounds good. I'm going to insert that. I'm going to insert it into my pistol right here. Sit insert. There we go. It's called revolver gun click. I'm just going to rename that to click. You know what else we should get? Let's get a zombie while we're here. Let's go to models so we can shoot it, right? Uh, drooling zombie. Go over our base plate. I'm drag that in there. There we go. Yep, zombie's got scripts. That's all right. It's a highly rated item, right? It's a Roblox item. All right, go back to shoot. Go to the top. Now, I'm going to make the click local. It's going to be so the player can hear it. The bang, everybody can hear it. We have that on the server script and the damage. You could do the click on that side too, but I don't think it's necessary. We'll just say click equals script dot parent. And then it was on the pistol, right? Uh, you could probably just do this. We don't have to do it. We could do a wait for child, but you probably don't need to, right? Because it's already in your hand and you already dumped the clip, right? So go down to here, get rid of our print, and then we'll say click play. All right, let's try it. Get our pistol out. Uh-oh, time to run. All right, I thought that was pretty cool. Next video, we'll add some reload to it. Maybe get an animation in there too.